Forbidden Knowledge, Gods of the Bible, Marduk. Throughout the Bible, there are many mentions of other gods that tempt and sway the children of Israel away from the God of Israel. In this continuing series, Gods of the Bible, we will go over who these gods are, where these gods come from, and how these gods affect the Bible. Marduk Announce and proclaim among the nations. Lift up a banner and proclaim it. Keep it nothing back, but say, Babylon will be captured. Bel we put to shame. Marduk, filled with terror. Her images will be put to shame, and her idols filled with terror. Marduk is the king of the earth in the Babylonian pantheon. Marduk is only mentioned once in the Bible, yet Marduk plays an important role in ancient Israel's interactions with Babylon. Babylon is an ancient city in southern Mesopotamia. The ancient city, like many ancient Mesopotamian cities, Babylon was located on the Euphrates River in modern-day Iraq. Babylon was a relatively minor city throughout most of its history, being too small to be a major power and was often under the control of its more powerful neighbors. In fact, many of its most famous rulers such as Hammurabi were not Babylonian at all. Babylonian hegemony lasted for a short period, but during that short period, Babylon had made lasting changes in its 100 or so years of dominance. During the rule of Babylonian conquest, King Nebuchadnezzar conquered Israel and exiled the Jews. He was also responsible for the destruction of the Temple of Solomon, and his actions were a direct cause of the loss of the Ark of the Covenant which resided inside the Temple. Marduk did not always belong as the head of the Babylonian pantheon. The Sumerian god Enla held the position of god of the earth for the Sumerian pantheon and the greater Mesopotamian pantheon, including Babylon. Marduk began as a patron deity of Babylon, and during the 3rd millennia BC, until around the time of the 1st millennia BC, Enla held the position of the king of the earth in the greater Mesopotamian pantheon. It is generally believed that Marduk overcame Enela through the actions of King Nebuchadnezzar. Historians have placed Marduk's ascension to the king of the earth during the time of Babylonian expansion. By the time of King Nebuchadnezzar, Marduk was established as supreme. This is not uncommon between warring people. When nations went to war, it was those people's gods who also went to war as well. It was believed at the time that if a people won, then that meant that their gods had defeated their enemies' gods. Although Babylon and Greater Mesopotamia were intertwined, it makes sense that Babylon would place their own patron god above the people they conquered. The gods of Mesopotamia have a storied history with several hegemonic powers taking control of the Greater Mesopotamia through history. Through most of its history, Babylon was a small and unimportant city to the Greater Mesopotamian people, such as the Sumerians, Ur and the Akkadians of Akkad. Babylon gained influence through its conquest and eventually established its own empire. Marduk is described as looking like a bearded human man. The symbol of Marduk was a wingless dragon in a farmer's spade. Marduk would wear a cloak adorned with stars and often rode his war chariot. Marduk was often known as Bel, which is a title for Lord. Marduk's symbol the spade was known as Maru, the Maru can be translated to as bull calf. Those who are familiar with the gods of the Bible series will recognize Lord as a common theme between the gods of the Bible. Baal, the Canaanite king of the earth, was also a title meaning Lord. The children of Israel would also call the god of Israel Adonai, which is my Lord. The use of the title to represent a god is not unique and common throughout the Bible and the peoples of the Near East. Marduk, like Baal, was both a fertility god and a storm god. They shared this aspect with Enlil, the god that came before Marduk, who was a storm god as well. When the Greeks and the Hellenistic powers conquered Babylon, they recognized Marduk as Zeus, and when the Romans conquered Babylon, they recognized Marduk as Jupiter. The planet Jupiter was also a symbol of the god Marduk. Marduk ruled with an iron fist and was known for his cruelty. In the Lubel del Nemki, often known as the Babylonian Job, 
gives praise to Marduk for not killing the narrator, even though Marduk went out of his way to torment a true believer. He was praised for not killing him specifically. Marduk was also a neglectful god. He was convinced by Era, the god of war, to allow Era to watch his realm while Marduk explored the underworld. In his absence, Era caused an age of darkness and led to the destruction and collapse of Babylon. The story of Era's wrath is praised due to Era's decision to not finish off the last survivors of Babylon and allow them to rebuild. Marduk's father is Enke, the brother of Enlil, the son of Anu, and different accounts give different tellings of their relationship. The Enuma Elish give several different versions of the creation of the blackened haired people. The traditional and older account of the Enke creating people such as the original Sumerian story, Another version of the Enuma Elish claims that Enke and Marduk co-created the black-haired people, and the final version has only Marduk creating the black-haired people. The consort of Marduk was Shupertenu, a fertility goddess. Some stories have Marduk's wife as Nayanya, the goddess of love. Marduk's son was Nabu. The cult of Marduk was prevalent in Mesopotamia due to Marduk replacing Enla as the king of the earth. The cult of Marduk spread all throughout Mesopotamia and into the Levant, and was adopted in part by the Persian Empire. The Hellenistic and Roman powers recognized Marduk as their own supreme deities, Zeus and Jupiter. Although more rare than the Levantine peoples, human and child sacrifice was practiced in Mesopotamia. We know from the Bible that the Babylonians had no problem trying to sacrifice the three companions of Daniel to a fiery furnace. Additionally, signs of fire ritual sacrifice have been found in the greater Mesopotamia peoples who would have worshipped Marduk. The act of human sacrifice in Babylon was still prevalent at the time of Alexander the Great. Like how Genesis tells the creation of the world in the Bible, the Enuma Elish gives account of the Babylonian creation story. The Enuma Elish is believed to have been written in the first millennia BC, around the same time Marduk became the king of the earth. The Enuma Elish gives account of the war in heaven, and how Marduk created the earth. At the end of the Enuma Elish, Marduk is given 50 names, with 50 being the number of Enla, the god Marduk replaced and taking the aspects of Anu, the supreme god of the Mesopotamian pantheon. The Enuma Elish is interesting in that it elevates Marduk to king of the earth with no mention of Enela, the god who held the position before the Babylonian expansion. Additionally, Marduk in his own historic account was never a major god to begin with. Marduk came into being in Babylon. However, it is widely believed that Marduk was a lesser and insignificant god to the greater Mesopotamian pantheon. Marduk shares some similarities to another god that originates from Babylon, Ashurala. Ashurala is a regional god that predates Marduk. The symbol of Ashurala was a farmer's spade, a symbol that Marduk and Ashurala share. Ashurala was the son of Enke, like how Marduk was the son of Enke. Ashurlai was a fertility god and a god of farmers. Marduk was a fertility god before he was a storm god. Ashurlai was a local god that originated from Babylon. Marduk was a local god that originated from Babylon. Ashurlai was the, a minor god. Marduk was a minor god until the creation of the Enuma Elish, written several thousand years after the first inscription of Marduk can be found. The similarities between Marduk and Ashurali are clear, and the rise of Marduk can be seen as a slow growth that finally overcame its predecessor with the Babylonian conquest. Is Marduk Ashurali? Did Marduk steal the title of the king of the earth? Is Marduk still around today? Are the storm gods Baal, Enela, Marduk, and Chemosh all the same? Let me know in the comment section below, and for more Supernatural History TV, like and subscribe.